Well, I think what we've heard from the Washington State Patrol is to expect that this potentially will have impacts in the morning commute that has been an issue throughout the day. People being rerouted through JBLM, being rerouted to the west on Highway 16 and down Highway 3 to get to Olympia after what you see here behind us. This is the area that a lot of people know on Interstate 5 as the Mounts Road exit right as you go into the Nisqually Delta. This was supposed to be a momentous day for Amtrak, but it's turned out to be a dark day. The pictures tell a story this afternoon that still has plenty of unknowns. Amtrak 501 was on its inaugural run from Seattle to Portland when it's 733 it abruptly stopped. I need EMS ASAP. It looks like they're already starting to show up. Hey guys, what happened? Uh, we were coming around the corner to take the bridge over I-5 there, uh, right north in the Squally, and we went on the ground. Um, is everybody okay? I'm still figuring that out. We got cars everywhere and down onto the highway. That the emergency call the dispatchers. 12 cars derailed, one hanging over I-5, yet another on the freeway itself, all during the morning commute. Rescue crews pulled survivors, and bodies from the wreckage. There are some casualties. The train was on a brand new stretch of track in a slight turn over I-5. An online record show was traveling near 80 miles an hour prior to the derailment. Can you say whether this train was going too fast for this turn? I can tell you that it's being investigated by NTSB and anything beyond that right now until their findings are out is pure speculation. Late this afternoon, Amtrak tried to quell reports of what went wrong. Any Has Amtrak been told anything tells? about an obstruction on the tracks? It is under investigation by the NTSB. But they are now the lingering questions about a route which never officially completed its first run. So yeah, a lot of questions right now, more than answers, and you can see the, the crews, the heavy machinery now here on site waiting to go in as soon as they get the all clear from NTSB. So Chris, we're hearing the train was going about 80 miles an hour. Do we know what the speed limit was in that stretch of the track? Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to focus on this in the coming days because there is a website that tracks the active speed of the trains. And according to that website, it showed this train going about 79, 80 miles an hour before this derailment occurred. Now, whether it was actually going that speed, we cannot say. We, we know there are signs down here that say there's a speed limit of 30 miles an hour. We also can say from being here on the scene throughout the day, we have seen the inspectors, the investigators looking at that turn. You can see it in the aerials where it almost looks like the train continued to go straight as opposed to making the turn, and that's where speed would perhaps come into play. And that front locomotive went well beyond the overpass there. Yeah, way down the hill onto Interstate 5 as traffic was going southbound on Interstate 5. Chris, I was going to ask you, one of the scariest sort of heartbreaking things about this scene were those cars dangling. Mm -hmm. um, they couldn't go into those cars for a while because it was too dangerous, right? Yes. yes, and we've been told by the Washington State Patrol here in the last hour that they believe that they have gone now through every car, even those ones that are dangling. They believe they have now done a head count, but they are being very cautious at this point as far as the numbers of deceased and the numbers of injured. Chris, thank you so much. All right, Chris Daniels, it. thank you.